Well, folks, I appreciate you so much tuning into the podcast. Today is going to be an adventure, to say the least. Uh, I have three of my very good colleagues, and the infamous Rasmus is with us today. We're going to take uh, a journey around certifications, uh, study habits, things to prep for, uh, and just some things that have been taught along the way or learned along the way by all of us. And uh, we'll kind of go around the room. And as I'm I'm looking at that, you can see, we'll start with Mr. Monahan. I am Joe Monahan. I work at Veeam. I'm a technical partner manager, but I do come out of the education department, worked with Rasmus, uh, which was a pleasure for a little over three years, which we'll talk about that, things that we worked on and teamed up on. And before that, I have probably over 25 years of training experience, which includes suffering through a few of them with Mr. Van Flat. <laughs> Eric. Hi, I'm, I'm Eric Doherty. I am a technical partner manager with Veeam for the Northeast. That's a fancy title for channel SE. Um, I've been in this industry for, uh, oh my God, 30 plus years now, something like that. It's yeah, I'm yeah. old. Um, but that's, on you. Yeah. but I've, I've also have had the uh, honor of being a student at one time or another of all three of these other gentlemen I'm on with today. Mm -hmm. Rasmus? Well, uh, yeah, uh, Rasmus Haslund. Uh, <laughs> I also work for me in what we call certification services as a principal technologist. And just looking over at the calendar, I noticed it's actually just turned the, 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 the stone on 10 years as a, as a trainer. So, Whew, nice. Yeah, right. Nice, <laughs> nice. Well, I I am totally thrilled to have all you guys here. Uh, and this is something I've kind of been brewing on for a little while, and, and it's going to be fun to do this. But I'm going to tell my Rasmus story before we get totally out of hand here. When I was at Veeam and I was working to become a certified trainer, everyone said, oh, no, you're going to do fine. It's all going to be great. But you have to let Rasmus review your material and watch you teach. And I thought, oh, this is no big deal. <laughs> and I started hearing every horror story that you could possibly be told going, oh yeah, you may pass or you may not. And it may be really bad. And it went from being so anxious that when I finally got a chance, we did it like at midnight one night because of the time difference, he lives in the Netherlands. I was so nervous. I couldn't even speak hardly. And then he said, this is what we're going to do. We're going to do that. We did it over again. Came back the next time. He goes, great. Yeah, great. You did. You passed. And I was like, <laughs> I did. <laughs> but you did. You did get that additional information from myself and others that said yes. the only thing that you need to fear is don't go unprepared. Exactly. That was it. Which was if you true. go unprepared, yeah. you are going to get crushed. And right. then rightly so. But you know, to your point, it's funny, he got this reputation unfairly because he and I would certify instructors and within five minutes, we're texting each other thinking, did they even read the requirements yeah. to walk into this room? I mean, we had people that had TVs on the top of like a dresser in a bedroom with no whiteboard. And we said, what are you going to write on? And they'd hold up like a piece of paper in their hand and say, I'm going to do the whiteboard on this. I, you have no idea. <sighs> And, and they'd all get, they were getting on him and I'd have to come back over the top and say, no, I was in there with him. This yeah. person came in and by the way, on their questions, they, they scored one of 14 and one of 17. So questions alone, you shouldn't be in front of anybody teaching. Which, which brings me to my first point that I'm going to throw yeah. at Rasmus is be prepared. If you're going yes. to sit a certification exam, be yes. prepared. Don't That's go in it. there unstudied. Don't go in there thinking, hey, I've been doing this five years. Taking an exam is not like walking through the product. And it doesn't matter whether it's Veeam, which we'll talk a ton about today, or it's yeah. Cloudian, or it's Cisco or VMware or whatever it is. Know what you're supposed to know to pass the exam or you won't. Yes. Rasmus, tell us thoughts that you would give to someone who's going to sit an exam. Well, um, man, I, 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 I couldn't agree more to, to, to your point here, right? Um, first step would definitely be, um, okay, you're already using the product. Fantastic. But realize what are you doing with the product out of the capabilities and 
Secondly, how much of that aligned up to what's going to be on the exam? So perfect starting point. If it's, if it's a serious software window, and I'm, I'm, you know, there's, there's new vendors, there's old vendors, but almost everyone at least will have a, a document of sorts that the name might vary, uh, study guide, exam guide, specification guide, what, whatever they may call it, but there should be some sort of document that outlines uh, as a minimum sort of the learning domains that will be tested on, on the exam and, and different, different vendors will go into more detail. Uh, I know, for example, VMware, Beam, we, we try to go in more in depth where some vendors like Microsoft will, will try to keep it more high level, but use that to try and map out, well, how much of this do I actually know? Um, and, and, and of course the trick here is, um, well, people I hear this so often, I, I, I don't know. So, okay, well, in an ideal world that there might be some sort of official practice exam or something like that, then you can kind of, I, I usually see go through this document, do some, some, some marking up of, of where you think you are, but then go do the practice exam. And right. then like print them out, you know, consider the environment, but then print them out anyway. Right. And then, right. uh, you know, put them <laughs> side by side because I doing either one, either one here, it, it might be useful, but it, it gives you that exposure of where did you think you were and, and where are you really? And, and try to figure out how much of this, like, do you know, but also could you go and do? Um, I think a, a good visual representation exercise here could just be something like take a piece of paper. And just for, for each of these things that, that you don't work with on a daily basis, just kind of block it out. Um, I know I've, I've been on calls with, with people um, who who trying to prepare or maybe they even failed the exam repeatedly. Joe's been on a couple of these calls and, and I don't know, maybe even Joe came up with this idea. I can't, I, I can't even remember how we came up with it, but we, mm -hmm. we did it on one of the calls the first time. And the guy literally like we boxed out half of the paper. And it's like, well, you know, your exam score was about 50%. So it seems like the 50% of the product you do work with every day, mm -hmm. you know everything there is to know about. It. Sure. That makes sense. But the other part that you never use, well, you said you didn't really study for that because you use the product every day. <laughs> so somehow that seems to track with what happened on the exam as well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You so another one that one yeah. other Rasmus and I ran into, and we put specifically a bullet in one of our guides saying, go join the forum, forums.beam.com, oh, yeah. because we would say to people, be prepared to answer questions. And they say, well, how am I supposed to get prepared for that without teaching a class? How about go to the forums? Because they're going to have very similar questions to what you might see yes, in a classroom. Are. And an exam yes, has very specific parameters. We know a classroom does not have those parameters, so you got to be prepared for anything. Mm -hmm. And we were fair. If if we asked them a question, they didn't have the answer. If they said, I don't know, but they went to try to find that answer, and when they came back, they gave it to us, we'd give them credit. But if they did one of those, you know, throw the sand down and soft shoe, and but it's all wrong, we, we weren't kind. We would be just like a student and say, well, those two parts don't make sense. Could you please re-explain? And we would walk them back to help them understand, you don't do this in a classroom. You don't just make it up and hope you get away with it. Mm -hmm. And that's why people thought we were mean. I was worse than Rasmus. He'd laugh sometimes because I'm in there going, let me step back two of those three parts. You just said sure backup was so we could move a database from point A to point B. Um, where did you get that information from? And they're scrambling to try to cover that information. Well, what did that have to mm -hmm. even do with moving something? And they just go through this scramble but all I'm trying to do is help them understand that if they had a student and that student's not going to let them off the hook, you're in front of all the other students. You mm -hmm. just lost all credibility. Yeah. So you might as well just say, I don't know and go get them the right answer or there. say, you know, yeah. I've got a link to it, but I don't have the answer. Yeah. That's, there's there's two know, sides to that. Yeah. <clears throat> there's yeah. so as a, as a student in those classes, number one, I'm counting on the instructor. I'm trusting the instructor to be the answer person. I'm not sitting there assuming they know everything because I also know they're an instructor. They're not using it every day. But I also know, and I do this for my own job. I, I tell them, I don't know everything, but I've got a whole team of people behind me that I can ask. That's my strength. That's my power. Sure. That's yeah. what I want them to do. There's two sides sure. to that. One, somebody may call them out in the class and be like, you're totally wrong with that. And they lose credibility there. Or the class goes on because nobody knows it's the wrong answer. 
Now you've got a group of people that believe this wrong answer and are out there perpetrating it across well, whoever else they're you talking know, to and the, then wondering why they're not passing the exam. Exactly. One one of the things too that I have learned from you know my teaching over the years and spending time with Erasmus and Joe and other folks, number one, okay, if you don't know it, don't pretend like you know it. Don't bullshit these people, you mm -hmm. know, and, and don't try to like fudge your way along. If you don't know, well, then write that down because that's something you need to study. You don't know it. Yes. And note cards, okay, flashcards. There's a link that I'm going to put at the base of this. One, to Erasmus has an amazing YouTube channel that walks you through not the questions from the Veeam exam, but similar type questions. And he talks about what the answer is and why you would get this answer from this information. I'm going to put that link in there for us too. But things yeah. you don't know, put them on a note card. Here it is. I looked it up on page so-and-so. And don't just skim things. Dig <laughs> through the material and go it was on page 28 paragraph 14 and here it is because you're now putting that into your head and writing it down because i bet a couple times after that you're going to go oh man i remember oh i read i wrote that down you know i'll give you a really good example that even eric may have noticed this but the other us as instructors have been through this probably one of the more painful situations you go through you get somebody in a room that has a lot of pride or a lot of ego and they answer something and they answer it incorrectly. And if you come back over the top and say, actually, that's wrong. And you, they don't take that. Well, they fight. I mean, they really fight. But what I learned to do was simply say, you know, that's a really interesting way. Here's the way that I would do it. And then I would just open up the screen and I would do it tangibly in front of them and say, yeah. but I mean, if you have a, see, Rasmus is laughing right now. You can't see our screens, but he's <laughs> laughing because he knows that there is no argument now. It's like, well, I do it differently. I had a person years ago, and, and Van heard this story in the 90s, that accused me of recompiling the codes of Windows NT40 to make that work. I, I pulled it up on a screen and I showed him how I would do it. And he accused me of recompiling the code. Wow. To if make you were that smart. I have all been working for you, but that's you. Be a lot of credit. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> oh yeah, that's, in order to make you wrong and me right, I, I yeah. learned to recompile Windows. I'm, really? So that's one of the biggest challenges in a classroom is when you get somebody that either their pride can get hurt really easy. You have to find a way to project that information without putting them in a bad spot. But then the one that actually Rasmus is the master of is Stump the Chump. I, I hate it, and I get really kind of belligerent about it, but Stump the Chump, you get somebody in there that knows it all, and they get bored, and they just start throwing these questions that are out of scope, out of subject, just to try to catch you off guard. And Rasmus just can, I wish I had that talent. Rasmus just look at him, boom, nail it and keep going and they're just it'd be like he punched him in the nose they just stopped for a second like how do you pull that out of there and i wish i had that but i didn't so i just kind of say just is that the subject <laughs> or is that does that have to do with this if not let's let's hold that till later because that's all they're doing is trying to entertain themselves and this is the challenge of training is you have all these personalities i used to i joke with rasmus when we were first meeting each other I said, I don't care how smart you are. If you don't have some psych psychological profile of how to read people, classes can be get really difficult because people are going to come after you. And if you don't see it coming, you're going to be way deep in before you realize how bad it is. So that's one of those things to look over a room and spot those type of people. And Rasmus and I, on my first big trade show with Rasmus, did a study for the exam session. And we were both on stage and we both looked at each other and pointed right over to our middle right. And there was a cluster of five people sitting there and we both nodded because we knew immediately within two minutes that cluster of people were going to be trouble. And they were. The first question <laughs> so, the guy so, said was, he, so, asked, he said, are these are these the actual exam questions? Of that was the first question. Yes. And we yeah, both looked at did. each other and went. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was the start. Yes, so, they are giving up the real yeah, part. Yeah. But so Rasmus, let's go back to that place when you guys are on stage. What were you sharing with them about? Now, we know we've already talked about the, the download document that you just talked about, which is absolutely imperative to have. Okay. What were some of the other things you were sharing with them when you were on stage, talking to them about prepping? 
Well, actually, Joe had uh, built a relatively good presentation. Um, there was a lot of, um, I would say it was, it was a big mix of, of practice questions, but also um, recall of, of information, right? So I, I think what's so important is always to, to get the fundamentals correct first. Like you want to get the foundations mm. before you drop the roof on top of that thing. And so it, a lot of the basics we had there were, were things like just the flow. So okay, you're producing the backup. It starts from, from here, it goes to here, to here, and then finally down onto the repository. But okay, what about the restores? Which, which components are involved and so on? And already there, we, 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 we could see uh, clearly some, some, some things have been explained wrong in class. I, I hope not, or just misunderstood along the way or forgotten. I, I don't know, but clearly when we sort of, because we, we tried throwing questions out and saying, like, okay, sure. well, what, what, what do you think? And I, I think a good way here as, as a student being on the other side, I mean, one thing is being the instructor. So um, one of the things I like to do, and, and that's what we did in the session a lot as well, is, is just ask the students questions. Because if there's yeah. a good continuous engagement, okay, well, that means unlike the gentleman uh, Joe was uh, talking about yeah. before, they're hopefully not bored, right? They, they're asking genuine questions. They're, they're talking about the topic at mm -hmm. hand and so on. All right, great. Then we're on a roll. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. But what if they're not? Especially in these online class times, right? Mm -hmm. well, then, then, then clearly I'm doing something wrong. Um, I, I don't believe that it's possible to do a full class where as the instructor, you doing everything you can and still have no questions. Right? Yeah, so I agree. Yeah, if, I if agree. Your job is getting any questions. questions. Yeah. Yeah. I'm going to be asking questions. Then I'll, sure. I'll, 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 I'll ask super basic questions that I know for facts that I already explained. Right? Yeah. But it might have been 10 slides ago, 20 minutes ago, and all of a sudden, and, boom, it's just going to come you back flying home. in. Yeah. I agree. Gentlemen, but I'm not going to be like, I appreciate that. Yeah. No, no, no. It, those days can get right. long. And even yeah. if the content is awesome, you still need something to bring you around. Like I'll do that too. And I'll ask questions. And I'm sure when I did my master's program, I annoyed the classes because I would ask questions, but that was my way during after working an eight, nine hour day and sitting in hour three of a three hour class. And that was my way of keeping myself engaged. Because if I didn't, I probably would have slammed my head on the table falling asleep oh, yeah. just by oh, asking man. not complicated questions, but just clarifying questions just to keep myself engaged. And mm. I'm sure that people are like, oh, my God, I was, I'm not, I've never been the stump the chump guy. If anything, I, I'd rather be the guy that drags him out to the hallway and explains to him how things yeah. are going to go. And we see, like, I think that's, that, that's that brings like. it to Rasmus's point. I think that brings that back home, though. And I've watched Joe do it a million times when we've been sitting or, or co-teaching or whatever we've done. If you pull something from 10 or 12 slides back, instantly, you know, one, as the instructor, whether you've delivered it correctly. OK. Mm -hmm. And two, if they're not engaged in that, then you've got to kind of rethink your tactics of am, am I dying up here? Are, is no one paying attention? You know, what are they not learning? Are they just here because they needed yeah. to get out of four days of work or what the story is? So it's, told, it's got multifolds. Go ahead. Yeah. I told Rasmus the technique that I was going to use with the two of us. And he laughed at me. He said, okay, whatever. Never thought that this was going to be something that was going to be effective. But as our instructors would co-teach in front of us, I would actually pick a bullet on the slide behind them and ask a question based on that bullet to see if they would turn around and address it. And he was amazed how many people would sit there and spin and spin, and it's right behind him in the bullet. And, and yeah, he's texting me like right now, he's almost laughing. He's texting me going, there's no way. I said, what they did is they they came up with a spiel for each presentation, but they That's didn't right. really master yeah. the content. Mm -hmm. They looked at the slide, they spieled it, and they're gonna try to get past it. So pick a bullet, ask them a question on a bullet right behind Performing the content, not that's exactly right. or teaching that's, the content. It was Man, very effective. Yeah. yeah. And I, I mean, I've sat in, in a lot of training classes over the years, you know, and yeah. I'm, I'm one of those people that I genuinely have to study, you know, I mean, I, I need to clear the room. It's got to be quiet. I've got to get my note cards and everything together. I hate taking exams. I mean, yeah. with three kinds of passion, I hate it, but I have to do it. It's my yeah. career choice, what I wanted to do, you know, and without a shadow of a doubt, 
the Veeam exam when I took my first one was the hardest test I'd ever taken. You know, it really was. VCP, in, out, done. You know, my Microsoft exams from years back, in, out, done. You know, nothing to it. I went in there the first time I took my VMCE exam. So before they've all been rewritten and everything. I think it's I got if and like a 52 on it, something like that. And I called Joe on the phone and I was like, shit, what is going on? You know? And he's like, did you study? I'm like, yeah, like a crazy man. Did you read the notes? What notes from the lab <laughs> manual? What lab manual? <laughs> oh, <Yeah>. those notes. <laughs> yeah. And you know, the genius that we that yeah. learned is I said, Rasmus and I in the beginning had a lot of conversations about how do we get people to study this material? And he kind of alluded to me that he put the notes in the labs to force people to go back through the lab information because it's important. And I agreed a thousand percent. And I would tell people, did you go to the labs? And they go, well, yeah, no. Did you go through the labs? Like I'm trying to hint to them that, no, don't say that you did them in class because you're not going to remember that. You need to go back through and look at that content because that's your hands-on experience. Yes. And People don't realize stuff we did in the labs sometimes wasn't covered in the lecture. The lab covered that piece. So you both of those make up the entire class. And that's yeah. where I think like you're saying, Van, I, you know me, I hate exams as well. But I remember taking the seven, the version seven exam way back when Justin Current was there. Mm -hmm. And I, the other, only way I could explain it was imagine a, a, a Russian Bond villain wrote all the questions and nobody went back to correct the language. And mm -hmm. it was twice as hard as version nine. These were like <laughs> flat out engineers wrote the question. So it was bad enough. The content was challenging, <laughs> but when you read it, it's like a bond villain is trying to, to kill you and you're stressed out. A am I wrong Rasmus? I mean, it was crazy hard. It was, it was, it was definitely not easy. Um, yeah. I, I, I clearly remember sitting the DV seven exam and, Mind you, yeah. back then, as a student, you actually had to have 80% to pass the exam. Yes. Yeah. If you wanted to be an instructor, you had to have 85. Yes. Yeah. And um, <laughs> I, I, I can generally say there was, there was a number of questions where I, I didn't understand what the question was actually yeah. asking. Um, it was challenging. I don't want to make that sound like an excuse. No. But I was relatively yeah. upset myself uh, not working for me at the time um, when I failed the exam because I really, really wanted to be the first one to pass the exam. So I sat it on day zero. You being competitive, I find that so hard to believe. Oh, yeah. do you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Well, not a thing. Um, but yeah, I mean, I had 84%. You had to have 85 as instructor. So I was sitting. Uh, oh, my God. Uh, um, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, thankfully, thankfully uh, those what, thresholds yeah. were, were lowered a little bit later on. But I think just just to kind of maybe put us back on on on, on track here, I think speaking of of some of these these, these instructors, as well as some of the students, I think just understanding is is so key. Like actually understanding mm -hmm. how something works, as opposed to having this memorized, right? And yes. just, um, what a lot of people like the theory about... of, of explaining something to the rubber duck. Um, right. So just, you can't. <laughs> Put the little uh, bath rubber duck in front of you and see if you can explain something to it. Um, maybe you have your flashcards. Right? Maybe something comes up and you're like, well, I definitely know that. Okay, we'll try and explain it out loud. If you can't, it's like Einstein said in the, in, in the old days, right? If you, yeah. if you can't explain it to someone else, you just don't know it well enough. Yes, that's right. Now, to yeah, Rasmus's point, good. when I was at Citrix, we had the courseware writers. And as instructors, we did what Rasmus said. We would sit in our office and we would talk out loud through it and we would call them and say, hey, I don't think this is going to work. And one of our rules was if they didn't agree, we went and grabbed, we had two classrooms. We'd grab a classroom and we'd have the instructor, the person that wrote it, present it. Just saying it in your head and saying it out loud are so different. And they would instantly say it and they'd stop and they'd go, good point. And they'd write, and that was it. But to your oh. point, you got to say it out loud you because you don't it, it's amazing how much differently things in fact when you're saying it out loud your brain starts thinking of questions that might come from that mm -hmm. and to, to rasmus's point when we teach i constantly try to drive information out that causes a question and if you're not asking i know you're not listening 
Yeah, so that's it, something that is a little technique that a lot of us use is I'm going to draw questions out. Yeah. yeah. No, and two two pieces too. One, I do that. When I get my note cards together, I read them out loud on purpose because yeah. I think they go into different places in your brain. I really believe I that. I agree. You know, and that works. Yeah. And the other question that I've got, guys, what do you think as a whole? Do you think it's and I don't want to say it, Stern is a requirement, but do you think you have to have a home lab? to be able to really understand the concepts and the products. Do you think you need to Rasmus? What are your thoughts? Oh, I mean, it definitely helps a lot. Um, yeah. So is, is it impossible? No, but it, yeah. it, it's, it's just, I had an example just a couple of weeks ago with, with a gentleman who was um, having some issues with the exam, right? And, and he was going through one of my practice exams and there was a couple of questions and he asked for my help. And well, what he asked for was the answer key. And I, I always told him, like, I'm not going to just give you the answers because that's not going to help anything. So I said, but I will help you find the correct answers. And I said, we can do this in two ways. We, we can try and find the answer in the documentation or we could try and just do it in the software. What, what did you do so far? And he said, I only looked in the user guide. I said, okay, mm -hmm. well, how much time would you estimate you've spent? Two hours. I said, okay, let's try and go to the lab. Where do you think? I didn't give him even one hint. Within five minutes, he had already located the correct location to look at. Within another five minutes, he understood exactly himself what the answer was. And, and, and this is where having a place, be it production or home lab right. where you can look at things helps. Obviously you shouldn't make yeah. casual changes in production. Joe knows that's on. <laughs> but you can look. I don't have to, to be on my class slides. Yeah. So that's always fun, but it's, um, <laughs> this is definitely where having a home lab is, is an advantage. And yeah. I, to yeah. extend that statement, you yeah. need a lab that you can break or a lab, regardless of whether it's home or away, because we were lucky enough to have access to our labs from the, the classes anytime we wanted. We could fire up those labs and use them and internally, but you we have to have a lab that you can break. You can't have like a lab that is, you know, that you have to really be careful of everything you touch because a lot of times to find something, you might break something. Yeah. So Eric, that's Eric, a really important piece. Eric, do you have a lab at home? Do you have a home lab? I do now. I just I just built it over the last year or so. I had one for a long mm -hmm. time, mm -hmm. then I didn't. Yeah. And then I started realizing I was trying to do everything I could in public cloud. Gotcha. Um, and there's yeah. just some things you just can't, you can't, you can't see run me doing a hypervisor. Like yeah. You know, oh, Lord. Try running VMware, Nutanix, CE, or something like that, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. separate hypervisors mm -hmm. in the cloud. Can't do it. Uh, yeah. Not yeah, well, anyway. Or not cheaply. <laughs> Let's keep this in yeah. mind. <laughs> you know, yeah, budget's, say, budget's a thing. Yeah, to Joe's point, I mean, when I initially, uh, when I was at Veeam, I started acquiring NUX, the little NUX. That's what I used, yeah. And I ended up with four of those. But I also found a place later on, uh, just a few months after I had started at Cloudian, um, that sold these Dell rack servers, okay? They have um, 256 gig of RAM, 64 cores in each one of them, and they were 300 bucks a piece. And kidding? they had slower drives, but they had 10 terabytes of storage. So, you know, with that, you know, you can pull them in, add some different controllers and stuff, and you think, oh my God, Van, why are you spending so much money? I think I have $1,500 in my lab and I currently right now can spin up probably 35 different VMs at a moment's notice, depending on what my customers talking to me about today, whether we're going to integrate a different backup product besides Veeam, or if we're going to do something that's going to emulate Splunk or whatever those things are. And I am old like you, Eric. You know, and Joe, who is older than all of us, you guys don't know, he's 71. I didn't say that out loud, but. God, he doesn't uh, look a day over 73. Know, he doesn't. I was thinking at least 74. <laughs> but I I have to touch stuff. I have to be able to see it run. I have to see it work. You know, at, at the end of the day, if I can't walk through it, and this is something that Joe has helped me with over the years. It's like, you know, you got to visualize it. Well, I don't have to visualize. I, I need to get in the console. I can't go, oh, I read page 51. Now I know what that looks like. 
hell, they could be a reversion or a new code compile on there that, you know, either Joe did trying to make me look bad or it really happened by the manufacturer. So I need to see it, you know, and see how it's going to react and interact. So, there's, well, there's a lot of things that first off, there's also if you can't afford a lab and I get it, everybody can't. Um, they you there are so many options out there from the vendors now for hands on labs. Um, you know, we have them at Veeam where, yeah, there's a guide, but you can go in there and do whatever you need to. So you, if you need to test a certain or check out the, the screens for a certain aspect of the product, fire up a lab. Just about yeah. every vendor has them anymore. Um, yeah. I think you can, you can get eval versions of Windows. Uh, okay, Linux, where you can get it wherever you want. Yeah, um, you for know. Sure. And you can even run those VMs. Get a copy. If you don't have that, get a copy of VMware Workstation. Yeah, absolutely. On a few VMs that way. Something like that. Yeah. You don't have to Virtual work. It doesn't have to be fancy. Just something yeah. that gives you the chance yeah. to fire up that console of whatever product. V, I don't care what the product is. You're not going to learn by not doing it. Actually, Rasmus, I started building uh, my lab back after I took your VCP class. Because I was like, I need to get more hands on with this. And this is the best way I'm going to do it. Joe, you know, what, very, what were you guys saying? Go ahead. Very quickly, the, the two pieces to that are... I've had many people say, well, why would I need a lab at my house? I can use, use a lab that I have elsewhere. I said, okay, one reason, authentication testing. If you go to a lab online, like go to our internal lab that Jason runs and say, hey, I want to mess around with the domain controller. What do you think the chances are that you're going to get access to that domain controller to change any kind of authentication rights? Before or after he lands at you. Yeah. Yeah. So or that's change the thing. DNS records. Exactly. Right. right. So you have... Yeah. You can break it as bad as you want, but you can also, to Van's point, add what you want and you successfully or unsuccessfully, and that's how you learn. But to the other side of that, on that same track, like when people talk about what's the importance of a lab. So Rasmus, about two years ago, we were chugging along doing the VMCE stuff, and we really, I mean, we knew it really well and to a point to where almost our bar was getting too high. And then Rasmus got a, a wall that was called the AWS class. And I'll never forget getting that phone call from him. And I'm laughing. I felt bad, but I was laughing. He goes, oh, my God, Joe, I don't think I'm ready. I'm like, yeah, you don't think you're ready? <laughs> He's like, no, I don't. This is crazy. But the reason is I'm about to go down the path. <laughs> and then he of called like, me and told me it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so but the whole idea was I'm, I'm going right now to get my solutions architect associates. But I don't have to teach it. And that's such a massive difference. Night you know, like he can pass all the exams yeah. he wants, but what Rasmus did was said, when I walk into a Veeam class or a VMware class, I got this. This is new knowledge, and I don't, mm -hmm. and I'm not living it every day. And that's where a lab would be critical. And with AWS, how do you get access to a lab? You know, that's the challenging part. So, you know, to Rasmus, yeah, yeah. it felt so <laughs> bad for him because I knew that that was mm -hmm. one of the biggest problems is he can't just jump into an AWS environment and start building and doing whatever he wants. He has to really find ways to get that information, which is really difficult. So Senior, my, my, can my I heart went out American to him Express. So. <laughs> and I'll defend yeah. you, Rasmus. You did a great job. I was in one of I your know, he did awesome. Classes. Everyone that fantastic. took his class raved about it, and he would call me the day after and go, I don't know if that one went well. And Rasmus, <laughs> no, everyone well. was freaking out how awesome yeah. it was. Well, I don't know. Because he's thinking of the things that he may have missed. He did but that's, a, that's an instructor. Is you're, you're, never, you're never looking at what you got right. At the end of the day, you're thinking of what was missing. And that's well, one of that's the true with anything that you spend a lot of time preparing. Think of yeah. a wedding day or yeah. something big like that to the audience, to your guests, everything looks perfect. And all you can think of as you're sitting there is, oh, the, the frosting on the cake was the wrong shade of blue <laughs> or oh, the yeah. band was some, wasn't supposed to play that song mm -hmm. second. They were supposed to play that third. They yeah. don't know that. That's so as right. long as you don't tell mm -hmm. them. They're not going to know. So as long as you're not like skipping a chapter that's like 20% of the test is based on, yes. missing a couple facts here and there, yeah. they'll pick those up. Um, Alcohol-free beer on tap. Come on, Rasmus. That's, you never yeah. do that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, the other side too, every time I put a guitar that's brand new, that's never been played other than by me in someone's hands, and it's theirs now, I, for months, literally for months, I'm going back through my head going, 
you know, if I'd have done that this way, or if I'd have put different screws in those pickups, or if I would have done the frets a little bit different on this, and you just do that. It, it it's no different than crafting something because instructing yeah. is a craft. It mm -hmm. is an art. Now we've all, you know, and, and for those of you who are going to listen to the podcast and, and I'm sure there will be plenty, you've all had a crap instructor, you know, whether it was in college, whether it was in a certification class or whatever. I can remember a physics professor that I had that I am not exaggerating. He wrote with one hand and erased with the other as he went across the board. And I thought, how in the hell am I going to learn what wow. you're doing? In a certification situation, one of the things you need to remember, and, and gentlemen, stop me if I'm wrong, you're in that class to learn. If you're not getting it, talk to the instructor and tell him, hey, I need some extra time. I need so-and-so. Yes. Can you please explain this again? Because you're not sitting that class for free, okay? Make yes. sure that you are taking the initiative to wring every piece of information and technique out of the instructor. That's what they're there for. Don't ben, be, even if you are taking it for free, yeah. your time is not free. You no, you it's put not value free. on your the fact that you're it, there. So even if the class yeah. is given to your company, you mm -hmm. still deserve to get value out of that. Oh, so, there's no question about it. I was told once yeah. we were doing a class and uh, and we all been there is when we got dinner, I'm eating. I'm like, I'm eating, eating when once we got dinner. And I said, wow, you seem pretty hungry. I says, I haven't had a lunch in four days. Because as an instructor, as you're going to get in line, you have a whole line of people that are coming up to talk to you. And I always would skip go. lunch if there were enough people yeah. because that told me, Am I missing something or did I actually spark something in them to get them into this class yep. to ask those questions? And that's why I want to hear it, because if they're asking me questions of stuff I already covered, I'm not doing a good job. If they're asking questions that expand on what I covered, ooh, okay, we're yep. I'll skip mm -hmm. lunch because we're in that zone. But there's you skip your breaks, or, you skip your lunches, and it takes a yeah. lot. It's like running a marathon when you teach a class. Yeah. If you haven't taught in, in months or even years and you teach one, at the end of the day, you go back to the hotel and you just sit. It's like you ran yeah. a marathon. You're yeah. constantly talking, but you're on all the time. Yeah. It's a very different experience. I, I've, I've watched Erasmus and Joe both at events we've been at together doing things, and as soon as there's a break, it always starts at like, well, at my company, you know, <laughs> Which yeah. means I've got a problem. Can you help me yeah. fix it yeah. at my yeah, company? Help desk too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. My joke is my PayPal account. Yeah. Is, so when yeah. I start the consulting line, that will be right over here. <laughs> no, you just but have will... Venmo up and go, just go ahead and scan this. Yeah. <laughs> so here's one thing yeah. I will tell you. Rasmus, so I tell this to Rasmus all the time. I was involved in education for a very long time. And he's one of those guys that actually taught me every day something new. And the reason not was only because his knowledge level was so high and he was so passionate, but the way that he was able to go to a whiteboard and take a subject and lay it out right on the spot at any time and, and, and really convey that information I mean, I was writing all these whiteboards down and taking them with me because he was able to take that, that we call it that wall, right? From verbal to visual. And one thing that people don't understand with training is there's text, there's visual, and there's auditory. Text people will read the book in class. And if you missed a line, they'll raise their hand and say, why didn't we cover this? They are, they're challenging. Audio people won't even look at what you're doing. They want to hear it to whiteboard and verbally convey that while you're visually conveying it at the same time and having both sides covered is such a craft. And Rasmus does a phenomenal job with it. And, you know, telling him right now, I've told him before that every time he does a whiteboard, I'm just, everything for me stops. It's like, oh, here we go. And that that's where for you, you know, Eric, now you do a lot of presentations and we've talked yeah. about anytime we do anything like that, you got to incorporate all three because you never know your learner. Mm -hmm. But we've talked, we've seen a lot of instructors, Rasmus and I, in our certification program where one of those was massively missing. In fact, mm. we had a guy that was whiteboarding and he was talking to the camera, not looking at the whiteboard and scribbling behind him to try to get credit for a whiteboard. Mm -hmm. And we said, what, what is that? And it was just Jeez. scribble. He, he thought he'd get away with it verbally, oh, but he was Lord. scribbling 
yeah. on the whiteboard to try to get credit. Well, and so, and you know, I'll tell you what, you've had to get you, meaning the plural you, have had to get very creative with how to whiteboard given the last few years. You don't get to stay oh, yeah. whiteboard anymore. Mm -hmm. Yes. Tablets, you know, I use my iPad and, and Joe, you've so discovered I. that. I hadn't yeah. realized that they're using that whiteboard app that also automatically updates to your screen so you can share that on your screen along mm -hmm. with the slide deck. I use them all, whatever it takes to get to get the idea yeah. across. They're all important because like mm -hmm. you said, you're um, my wife is a visual learner. I know that with anything I can't I can't do it and have her watch me and she has to do whatever the thing is. I can't tell her how to do it. She's like, I, you lost me on the second word. It's it's that combination. If you're doing it, yes. showing her and she's doing it at the same time while you're showing her, she's going to learn. And yes. I find gotcha. most people need all of that. There's very few that can read a book. Like I, I think I, Rasmus, I think you even said it. Nobody ever learned to ride a bike by or ride a bike by reading a book. Right. Exactly. Well, motorcycles. You can tell somebody how to, how to let go of a clutch on a motorcycle. Put them on it. <laughs> <laughs> well, guys, I I appreciate it so much. We are we're running on time, and I need to run around the room real quick and and give each one of you one last thought. Rasmus, if you could share a thought about what you would say as the one most critical thing that you would share with someone about taking exams, what are those? One one item of all the things we've talked about, what do you think is most critical? Oh, um, I'm a very kinesthetic learner, so probably I would uh, come back to the home lab. Um, just okay. really consider investing in that. Uh, I think it's, it's going to be helpful for so many things. Uh, a lot of people say it's too expensive, but um, the official Beam lab that we use for trainings only has 40 gigabytes of memory consumed. You don't have to make some major investments. It's, yeah. it's entirely yeah. possible to do it on a budget. Buy something cool. used if you need to. Cool. Yes. Eric, as a taker of exams yes. like I, what what's one thing that you think of the things that Joe and Rasmus have shared today do you think is a critical? I think it's learning your learning style mm -hmm. and how to study. I had to learn how to study as an adult. I was one of those fortunate people growing up who could just show up for the test in high school and even through most of college and just do fine. Hmm. Um, then I, I got to these exams yeah. as an adult and mm -hmm. I needed to learn how to study. Gotcha. So that gotcha. I think is the most important. Learn the study mm -hmm. style, figure out mm -hmm. which one works the best for you. Stick mm -hmm. with it and don't be afraid to fail. Yeah, yeah, that's a good point. Don't be afraid to fail because then you'll be less hesitant about doing. Mm -hmm. Joe, of the things that are there, Rasmus is putting the lab at the top and obviously there's more than one thing. Mm -hmm. What's your most critical thing, Joe? So Eric's heard me say this a thousand times in study sessions above everything else. If you can't do this, you will never succeed. Be honest with yourself. Yeah. If I ask you a question and then five seconds later, I give you the answer and you say, well, I knew that you didn't know that. <laughs> seconds ago. So be you honest with yourself. If you see something and you don't know, when I took the VMCA exam version nine, I had a stack of, of flashcards that I didn't know. And it was daunting, but that's, I didn't know it. I was honest with myself and I went back through those and that's gotcha. what caused me to pass is being honest. So with your home lab, don't skim through something because you go through mm -hmm. it step by step because Rasmus and I used to go through the labs and I would call them all the time and look for those little, little things in the labs that we missed. But it's because when you're going through it over and over again, you don't think it's wrong until somebody else points it out. Be aware okay. and be honest with yourself. That's it. Good points. Really good points. Gentlemen, thank you so much uh, for being here today, sharing your thoughts. Uh, to my listeners, uh, we'll have links to some other videos that are there, some different techniques that uh, Joe has chatted about, some of the flashcard things. I've got a few videos that I'll put out. But most of all, uh, I'm going to put a link to the YouTube channel that Rasmus puts together that literally – you can apply his process of taking a question apart to any exam you're taking. But remember, study, know your material. If you can't just regurgitate this stuff back just by walking through it, you don't know it. Okay. You don't know it. So know it before you know it. Okay. Gentlemen, thank you so very much. Send in those tweets in the cards. 
And uh, I look forward to sharing this one and all the detailed information with you from there. Fellas, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you, Vince.